I mean, the ones that, um, there were two that came to my mind. One was um, uh, Jephthah, in the book of Judges, Jephthah the Gileadite, mm -hmm. who, um, perhaps just take a look at it actually, Judges 11 it is. When I, when I start reading it, you'll sort of go, oh yeah, I don't know. Um, judges. Uh, uh, this really is foolish. Uh, Judges 11, verse 30. Jephthah is, um, is, is one of the mighty men. Uh, that, 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 you know, it talks about uh, mighty men of valour. Um, so so uh, verse 30 of Judges chapter 11. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. And said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whoso sorry, that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. And um, and uh, we may remember that um, in verse 34, when he, you know, this happens and he, 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 he comes back home, <coughs> verse 34, And Jephthah came to Mitzpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and dancing. She was his only child uh, beside her. He had neither son nor daughter. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, he's bound then by his vow to the Lord. Yeah. You know, a foolish... Uh, hasty vow to God. Uh, to, uh, it's quite an extraordinary um, account of what of, of what happens. But the other one that, that, that came to me is in, in, in Matthew twenty seven when uh, uh, when when it's between Barabbas and, and Jesus yeah. and uh, you know who the the <coughs> going to be uh, uh, loose because remember that they were they could they could release one of the prisoners and and you have Pilate there sort of saying well you know do you want me to to release this Jesus to you and say no no we want Barabbas and uh, and they're shouting crucify him crucify him and, you know Pilate's saying but he, he he sees he's an innocent man I I can find no no uh, wrong in no evil and they say uh, his blood be upon our heads and upon our children. You know, and uh, we know that sort of very shortly, AD 70, mm. that Jerusalem is absolutely leveled to the ground, isn't it? The, 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 the Romans come in and uh, de destroy uh, the temple, leave not one stone upon the other. Uh, you know, lots of people meet their death. And uh, it, it could even perhaps be argued that... that Upon their descendants, upon the descendants of those people, there was so much trouble after that. I think you know, Israel ceased to be a, a recognised nation after that, didn't it? Yeah, trampled you know, down by the, the Gentiles. Gentiles yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so again, uh, hasty words mm. with regard to the Son of God, you know, and um, and carrying with it lots of uh, uh, consequences. Um, which of course are actually foretold through through many of the uh, many of the prophets. But what interested me about this this verse here in James um, about about wrath or wrath, however you want to say that, um, that, that the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. That as we were reading on Sunday in Romans chapter one, that the wrath by contrast the wrath of God. Is entirely righteous, mm. you know, and uh, uh, there is no um, contradiction between God's wrath and His righteousness. In fact, it is right for God to pour out His wrath uh, upon the wicked, yeah. and so so that's the uh, that's the contrast. Um, I think. I thought it was interesting as well with this this wrath because. Um, other some commentaries, as 
looking at um, referred to man's own self-effort to try and defend God not mm -hmm. just not spiritually but physic by, by physical means that is um, take for example the Crusades mm -hmm. of launching into war trying to take back Jerusalem uh, thinking you're doing the righteousness of God but quite the opposite you you've left a stain in history that people often refer back to as an example of why Christianity is a bad religion. Yes, very <laughs> It doesn't produce the righteousness of God. In fact, it um, it tarnishes his his good his goodness, his good reputation. Yes. So it it was a reminder that we have to be careful whenever we meet, when whenever we defend truth, make sure that we do it under the um, Influence under the guidance and, and uh, weaponry that is spiritual, that we're speaking um, as as God wills, not as ourselves. Yeah, that's a really good point because, um, of course, uh, Jude talks about contending for the faith, doesn't he? Um, and yet, we're to contend with meekness mm. and, and and gentleness. And uh, for our natural selves, for m most people think if you to contend to to defend, as you say, mm. is the opposite of those things. It's uh, you know, is to do it strenuously <coughs> and you know, yeah, uh, uh, just the opposite of humility and gentleness. And yet, that that is the manner in which. Uh, a, a Christian could should conduct themselves, and there was one word that kind of uh, made me think of this that, that the Bible uses, um, and it's uh, in particular the King James is this word, uh, temperate, you, you know, oh. being temperate. Yes. Um, in, in Galatians five, and it talks about the the, the fruit of the spirit, and one of those uh, fruits or part of that fruit. Is, is temperance being 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 temperate? Is it, anybody know what temperance means or being temperate? It's a bit like moderation, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think a lot of the modern translations have self-control. Mm. Um, it's it's literally, I think, holding your passions. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, in the old days, you used to have temperance societies who used to mm. go and preach against drunkenness, that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, in fact, there's I think I shared it with you in, uh, in in New Mills. There's a like a little museum there, mm. and uh, they have the, there's a, a flag or a banner that's something like you know uh, it's New Mills Temperance Society or something like that. And they used to actually march about the place and preach against drunkenness because it was such a big problem mm. uh, uh, in those days. But yeah, I mean, obviously, te temperance is not just against drunkenness, but against any form of uh, of indulgence and, and lack of self-control. Mm. But yeah, a Christian is called to be temperate, to hold their passions uh, uh, carefully. Yes, yes. I think it is interesting, though, that um, uh, there are occasions in Scripture where you find, um, like prophets, uh, even Paul. Mm. Um, they still have a sense of humour or they are willing to even be a little sarcastic. You for mm. take oh, for yeah. example Elisha. Is it Elisha who uh where is your God? Has he gone to the privy? Oh Elijah, yeah. Elijah, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah, this kind of thing. So I mean <laughs> there are occasions yeah. sometimes where Is he asleep? <laughs> yeah, is he is he yeah, yeah, yeah. So um we you know we, we mustn't be milk sops. No. But, and there's the, as you say, it is it is temperance. There's a danger in becoming an invertebrate, but equally in becoming a radical. So there's a, yeah. the, you know, there are times where it can be that somebody who makes um, stupid, nonsensical claims that are all even blasphemous mm -hmm. um, need ought to be put rebuked. Yes. So. Yes, no, I agree with you. I think the scripture would. Uh, People don't like that because we, we live in a very gentle culture, don't we? We live in in English culture. It's polite.